Welcome to Model Steam Engines Top Tip Time Part 42. In case you're wondering why I make these Top Tip Time videos, well they are actually quite useful. I use edited extracts from existing videos showing specific areas of interest. This one shows how to achieve the optimum valve timing on a Stuart S50. And it also has some painting tips in it. And the other reason is, today and tomorrow I'm working in my recording studio. I got up very early to edit this video, because for my Patreon supporters, a top tip video is better than no video at all. While on the subject of Patreon, I no longer have enough patrons to make it worthwhile doing this job from a financial point of view. Ever since Patreon, in their infinite wisdom, created the facility so that viewers can have limited access to Patreon as a free member, which meant that quite a lot of my patrons cancelled their paid membership and switched over to the free membership. Then they were immediately blocked by me, because Patreon has to be used for me to make these videos and it is a pay-per-view service, and it's not expensive. Anyway, that's enough of that, it's on with the show. In this clip on the left hand side, you can see the eccentric sheave, the eccentric strap connected to the eccentric rod. In the middle, there is a 6BA tap in my tap wrench. And if you look closely at the flywheel, you'll be able to see an Allen type grub screw in that as well. I never use the slot headed grub screws because they break. This arrangement is much better. This is a box full of Allen keys and it's had a lot of use, in fact, it's ready for the bin. After 40 odd years, I think I do need to buy a new set of drawers to hold these. It's one of those many jobs that I do need to get around to. In this box of small Allen keys and grub screws, I found a suitable 6BA grub screw and fitted it to the sheave. Here I'm reattaching the cylinder to the main bed plate casting. And I don't know why these engines use such small and feeble fixings. Often on S50 steam engines, I re-thread the cylinder casting and drill out the three holes in the sole plate casting to take the larger bolts. Today, I am using a brand new paintbrush. This is a branded paintbrush, so I would expect it to be good. I'm not going to tell you what the brand is, but it is a definite branded paintbrush, not just a cheap one. I decided to open the tin of Stuart Green paint that I'd already used. And inside the tin, there wasn't much of it left, but at least it was still liquid, although it was very thick and sticky. I'm going to thin it down very slightly using some white spirit. I don't want to thin this paint too much, so the amount of white spirit that I'm using is very small. This amount was not quite enough, so I added some more. And after the addition of a second small amount of white spirit, I thoroughly stirred the mixture with the stick. Had this have been brown paint, I could have asked the question, what's brown and sticky? The answer, of course, is a stick. But with the green paint, that doesn't really work. In no time at all, the paint is exactly the consistency that I need it to be to paint the engine. Sit back and relax, it's painting time. When painting castings, I like the paint to be slightly thicker than normal. Somehow it gives that painted casting look. This paintbrush is rubbish. It's losing more hair than I normally do. I've never had a paintbrush as bad as this in my life. It's turning shedding bristles into an art form. When I cleaned the brush and then pulled on the bristles, most of them came off in my hand. When I pulled on the bristles for a second time, all of them left the brush. I still need to paint the black part of the base, but I'll do that once the green paint has dried. To my annoyance, I can still see some small bristles that fell out of the paintbrush, the one that went in the bin. But once the engine gets a good coating of oil, I don't think it'll show up too badly. Since I painted this engine, I bought a new set of brushes, and they really are very good. In this clip, I've just finished painting engine number two and I'm putting the clean brush back in the box. This brush did not shed any bristles, and the shape of it was very easy to use, much easier than I thought it was going to be. Here I'm screwing the piston into the crosshead. The end of the piston is slotted, not just through the gunmetal part, but through the centre, which is the steel piston rod bit. 
here you can see the piston rod, complete with the lock nut. I'm not going to labour this reassembly. Just remember that reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. The video is running at twice normal speed. As I was reassembling this engine, it did occur to me that there was no damage whatsoever to any of the fixings on the engine. No bolts sheared off, no threads stripped in holes. Everything is good and it went together very well. Now it's time to fit the crosshead guides. Again, a very simple operation. I don't need to dwell on this for very long. I've just mentioned that none of the fixings are stripped, so I'm not going to start by over tightening these and stripping them. These are very small bolts, 7BA. Be very careful when you tighten them up. They only need nipping up gently. Don't torque them up, otherwise, the heads will snap off them. And removal of broken 7BA bolts from the engine parts is something that I'm trying to give up. Now it's obsession time. I'm setting the valve timing. This is a very simple thing to do. All I'm trying to achieve is admission of the compressed air just before the piston reaches top dead centre, at both ends of the stroke, and this is more difficult than it first sounds. Rotating the eccentric sheave on the crankshaft advances and retards the valve timing. While I'm oiling up the engine, ready for a prolonged run, I will explain. By moving the eccentric sheave first one way and then the other, then tightening the grub screw to hold it in place, and rotating the engine with a little bit of compressed air being fed into the steam chest, if you cannot get the admission exactly the same at both ends of the stroke, you will need to move the position of the slide valve. The oil can is pointing at the part that you need to just undo temporarily. Once the bolt's been removed, lift the eccentric rod out of the valve fork and rotate the valve fork one turn. And if, when you put it all back together, the valve timing is worse, you've turned it the wrong way. I'm sure you can understand what I mean. Here's the first test run. My workbench is intentionally a soundboard to amplify any mechanical noise. When I lift the engine off the workbench, you can hear what it really sounds like. Running the video in slow motion is useful because you can hear the evenness of the exhaust beats. And now it's painting time. I'm not using my new paint brushes because when I painted this engine, the brushes hadn't arrived. This paint is gloss black by Phoenix Precision Paints and it's really good paint. I do like to brush paint steam engines because when I look at full size ones, they're normally brush painted also. And it's for that reason that I don't like to over fettle castings. If you're going to try and get a mirror finish on your castings, you may as well use bar stock and machine it from the solid. After carefully painting the base using this black paint, I applied the same to the flywheel. I rubbed it down with some Scotch Brite, just as a key for the paint. And here, just for the viewer who said, what happened to the unpainting brush? Well, here it is in action. When you switch the brush into unpainting mode, you really have to be very careful not to unpaint the entire flywheel. The next day, I went back into the workshop, fitted the flywheel to the engine and the engine to the base, and here it is running. And that is it. I can add nothing more. I'd just like to say, as I always do, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.